There's some interesting things going on with chapter 20. Some of the reasons it might be included is it helps us to see again Abraham's goodness and righteousness, that he is able to commune with the Lord in a way that blesses the lives of other people. Just like we saw where he was trying to save Sodom and Gomorrah, he now saves Abimelech. We also have these stories about how did God bless Abraham with so much wealth and prosperity and resources? So we know that he got a lot of resources out of Egypt. Here again, he's moved into the land, and Abimelech, after all this occasion, is like, here's a bunch of sheep, here's a thousand uh, silver shekels, and so it's a way of God fulfilling the promises that he'd given to Abraham in Genesis 12. Like, yeah, you're going to have some kind of crazy situations you're going to have to work through, but in the end, I'm going to turn it all for your good. So this may be one of the reasons why these stories are preserved is to help remind people that God will fulfill his word to give the prosperity and the land to Abraham. Excellent. So in chapter 21, Isaac is born, and we're told that uh, Abraham, verse 5, was a hundred years old when Isaac was born, and Sarah's ninety, we know from, from this story. And in verse 6, and Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. You could, you could replace both of those with to laugh and rejoice what started like an impossibility, now that laughter of, of irony becomes laughter of rejoicing. Yeah, the, the, this laughter of like, oh my gosh, the Lord did it. How many of us have ever laughed in relief or laughed in the disbelief that something amazing happened that God has done for us? This is what Sarah's done, and I love that they give the name of the child Isaac, so they will always remember that nothing is impossible with the Lord. Can anything be too hard with the Lord? No. Let's laugh in joy because God can save all of us and can wipe away all of our tears. And in verse 9, the next event mentioned after the weaning of Isaac is where Sarah is going to kick out Hagar and Ishmael, her son, out into the wilderness. Look at verse 9. Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. There may have been some kind of impropriety that, that Ishmael had done that was grievous enough that it actually had caused significant problems in the family. We're not exactly sure, but the way this word shows up, particularly the fact that the Israelites, the same word is used for them, where God is now really angry for them sporting or mocking, and he gets mad enough that uh, he wants to kill everybody, and Moses has to intervene and say, Lord, you've taken these people out of Egypt, we can work with them and let's give them another chance. Yeah. So this would help us to understand this hard passage where Hagar and Ishmael are sent off into the wilderness, but then something really, really beautiful happens. Yeah, now as, as the very next verse, verse 10, wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Maybe there's more to this story than we then we have all of the details in our in our Bible today. So as they, they go out and Hagar thinks they're going to die, and if you go to the wilderness of Beersheba, you can see that there's not a lot of chance of survival out there, but God saves them, and he saves this young, young lad, and uh, Abraham was given that promise that he would, he would grow up to be a great nation, and he has. He has fulfilled that.